Hey, what's going on, guys? You're welcome. <laughs> and then I do it. Hey, what's going on, guys? This is Marcus the Maniac McGee, and you're watching The Marcus Deegan Show. <laughs> the Marcus Deegan Show! <laughs> Don't try to do an intro like that once you've had a big night. What's the story, guys? Welcome to another episode of the podcast. I'm your host, Marcus Deegan. You know who I am, shooting from Sin City, Las Vegas, the place of bright lights and world title fights. Thanks for coming back to my channel and joining us for another great episode. I've got another badass in the building. And I feel really honored today because I, I asked him, you know, you're here for the fights, right? You're here for UFC 300. And he's like, nah, I'm, I'm just here for this. So for him to come and spend his time to come into my studio and jump on my little program, it means a lot to me. You can, I like people that have a lot of options and accolades and things about them. So let me tell you a little bit about this guy. He's a husband, first and foremost. He's a dad. He's a skateboarder. He's a cook. He's a podcaster. Oh, and he fights in the Bantamweight division of the UFC. I just thought I'd throw that one in. Would you please welcome to the podcast? He doesn't look like a maniac, but I'm sure he is. Marcus the Maniac McGee. What's the story, brother? What's going on? What's up, buddy? <laughs> I've been trying to get you on this podcast for a minute. It has. It's been a while. That's why I knew I needed to get up here. I was like, man, I'm putting the time aside. I'm rolling up there. Whatever it takes is going to happen. Do you have much free time? Uh, I wouldn't say free time. No, no. You know, I always, uh, in between the garden too, you know, it's like, uh, no, I don't really have a whole lot of free time, but I, I make it that way. What do you mean in the garden? I have a garden too at home. So I'm a, I do my little gardening at home. Oh, shit. So we got to throw gardener into the mix as well. Yeah. And the gardener. Is that right? Yeah. So what do you grow all your own food? So like, yeah, all my own food right now. It's, it's all, uh, I, I'm like my fifth garden in my fifth har harvest in. So right now I got some, uh, broccoli, cauliflower, eggplant, Different tomatoes, squash, zucchini, cucumbers, uh, potatoes, just the whole nine. Wow. Yeah. So about being self-sufficient is something that obviously means a lot to you, hence the way that the world's going. We might need to be able to grow our own food. Why do you grow your own food? I just like the option of being able to. And like I, for me, it's like the more things I put on my plate to learn and and, and try to achieve, like I stay away from things I shouldn't be into. So it's another one of those things that help me – Another thing is, like, I was into uh, hydroponic growing cannabis for a long time. So I did as a living. So uh, I was like, man, I can grow weed, but I can't grow any plants, like regular plants. I have a regular garden. Yeah. And I was like, man, I want to start understanding like the microbiome of the soil, and I want to start understanding more of the plant and the chemical breakdowns and all these things. So it was like, all right, how do you learn? You do it, right? Yep, that's it. Isn't that weird that like people like you and I that spent so many years putting fucking bad shit in our body once you stop doing all that you kind of literally do a 360 degrees with what you want to put in your body isn't that insane yeah it's it's a little different i, I, I don't know if it's a chemical change in the mind or what it is but it, it's definitely i think a, a thing that is across the board you hit the nail on the head it is a chemical change in your mind and this is what i say to a lot of people when i talk about getting sober you need a good two years under your belt before your brain even starts working properly again for someone that pumps the drugs or, or booze into them <laughs> like i did daily for many many years decades and decades and decades it takes it takes a minute man it takes a minute how's your sober journey been uh, not too crazy. Uh, I mean, not necessarily so right? Like I said, I smoke cannabis mostly. I wouldn't consider that as mm. not, yeah. <laughs> it's different for weed smokers. We don't consider it as a drug really. Yeah. It's more of a way of life. And, uh, I, don't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go as far as calling it medicine either, but maybe a way of life to, I, I just, I'm, I just feel I'm a better person when I'm, when I'm smoking weed. Yeah. And I agree. I think it's the same way. You know, I think the intent behind it is a little different for me as well too. more along those lines as well. Lifestyle. Um, and things like that. So, but, uh, yeah, for me, you know, again, like, uh, having the family and putting my focus on them has kept me away from a lot of the other things that I used to get into when I was younger. Cause same with me, you know, drinking drugs, parties, women, all that stuff. You know what I'm saying? Those are my focuses. Uh, and with and those pretty green eyes that you have there, I'm sure that the women would just love going to that. Cause I know there's a look you have, a, you have that look. We had a guy in thunder from down under that had that look, that kind of Polynesian look, but with the light eyes and the women absolutely loved it. So I'm sure you were very successful with the ladies before you met your lovely wife. Yeah. You know, well, that, yeah. Something like that. <laughs> yeah, that was kind of a little gay, wasn't it? Actually, <laughs> I'm That's complimenting okay. about, him, about his eyes, but you know what? I worked in the industry, like before I got into 
this kind of work. I was in the entertainment industry. Entertainment was what I did. So I would judge someone that worked in the industry that I did. In the show that I was in, it was all dudes uh -huh. that were in physically top performance shape. You know, when you're doing like Chippendales and Thunder from Down Under, these guys have got to look. So I would, I'm, I'm used to being able to pick guys out of a crowd and know, you know, what women would like. Yeah, no, that's all good with me. Kyler always says it all the time. Any post I have up, if they get me a good a good shot of me and catch my eyes, she's like, oh, well, those eyes were so mesmeric. You know, me and him, get we get crazy. When Who says that? Kyler Phillips. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I suppose when you're good looking and you're in the UFC, I mean, who who else was really, let, let me think, who were some of the real good looking dudes that were in the UFC? If I can think of one off the top of my head, it would be Luke Rockhold. Uh -huh. Yeah, for sure. He's probably like that. He, he, is he probably Paulo like. Paulo Costa, you have to throw him in the mix. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, especially his fucking body. Did you see his physique? I mean. His physique is insane. Crazy. Yeah, crazy. I would say Kyler's up there too, you yeah, know, with that hair. Everybody, you know, yeah, yeah. He, he's dreamy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I always, now that when I see you and if, if I see really cool skateboarding stuff on Instagram, I always send it to you. That's also something that's a way of life as well, right? Absolutely. You've probably been skateboarding since you were a young fella. Yeah, I think I started skating when I was like 12 years old. That's when I picked it up, and it just stuck with me through all the times, basically. You know, and at higher levels and lower levels as the time went, obviously. But, yeah, I feel like that's a way of life. I see myself being 50, you know, still skateboarding. I mean, that in itself is another sport that fucking causes a lot of injury. Mm -hmm. Have you had injuries from skateboarding, or have you been pretty good? Oh, yeah, I had injuries, but back in the day. Like, the skateboarding I do now, my focus right now is to – get uh, consistent with my tricks, get consistent with how I feel on the board. So focus on more basic stuff uh, and stay away from like stairs and handrails and all the stuff that like you can make. kill you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and just get hurt. Right. I'm training, you know, twice a day. So it's like when, if I take a good fall at the, at the skate park and I got two training sessions a day, it's just like, I, I understand. Because that. I guarantee you're not wearing elbow pads or knee pads, oh, are you, Marcus? Yeah. Or a helmet. No, no, no. Part of me wants to. I'm like, man, maybe I need to. <laughs> I'm, you know, maybe I need to start doing. I know I talked stuff about that for years and years, but maybe, maybe we'll see. So, are you into the culture of it? Are you into like dirt bikes and stuff as well, like Travis Pastrana and and uh, the Deegans and all those kind of people that are in that kind of Steve O and all that kind of, in that realm of what sport would you call it, like? Extreme sports. Extreme sports. <laughs> that's it. Yeah, extreme yeah. sports. Are you into all that? Yeah. So extreme sports, like uh, again, that was like the thing that kept me, like that kept my attention growing up. Was a lot of people wanted like basketball, football. I played a little bit of those things, like in the streets and little. But I always liked extreme sports, and I, I mean, I couldn't dirt bike or do anything like that just because we were broke. We didn't have nothing like that. So, uh, but it was I appreciated it from the outside. And then when they came out with Triple X and Vin Diesel was doing everything between skateboard and snowboarding, I was like, yeah. And, Rocket Power. I'm always wearing Rocket Power clothes. Like, Rocket Power was a big one for me too. I like it all. Yeah, I was I was into Vans and Dickies and fucking uh, and uh, that that I love the clothing. That I was never really good at surfing, and I grew up in Australia. I was never really good at surfing, but I was always pretty good at skateboarding. Uh -huh. Not too bad. Okay, at okay, we gotta hit a session. What about now? Uh, I, well, I have a fucking ruptured Achilles at the oh, moment. Oh, dang. Never mind. So. Yeah. Once until I get until I get the surgery done, I'm I'm kind of out with anything like my boxing training. Everything is out. walking long distances is out. Yeah, definitely anything to strain that area. Yeah, bro, mm -hmm. which was a bad one. But so like, but you're you're pretty injury free. Yeah, all round. Right, you've never had surgeries. No, I have. Yeah, so I uh I I've had a couple different surgeries, but this is the biggest one probably. I was snowboarding, what 2018. <laughs> Got my arm chopped off, basically. Somebody ran over my arm with their snowboard. No way. Yeah. Really? Do you have photos of that? Uh, I do, yeah. It's on my Instagram. So if you go back back to my Instagram, it was like when I was first about to dial in, I was like, man, I'm about to go pro. It's all good. You can see my Instagram starting off, and it's a couple pictures of me getting new gear, and then it's a picture of my arm being cut wide open and all my tendons being severed. So how did that happen? You fell over, and then someone just ran over the top of you, something that easy? No, I'm uh, honestly, it was partially my fault, so I take the blame for it. But uh, uh, we were coming down. I forget what it's not the bunny hill but it's the hill to get to the actual uh drop in for you for you to actually start bombing and where's hill. that uh this is up in stobo in, in, in arizona in okay, okay okay and uh like i set off to the side not in the middle but i set off to the side but my back to the mountain it was very slow slope though you shouldn't be moving fast there so i didn't think anything of it i needed to fix my boots went to go fix my boots got them all ready went to hop up you put your arms down to hop up girl hits my arm boom I was like, man, I thought it was just maybe broken or just really hurt at so first. So it, it hurt? Yeah, right away I was like, I knew it was hurt, but I didn't think it was that bad. And uh, she was like, oh, 
you need to get down. We need to get you help. And I'm like, no, nah, I'm. Did it be- stop bleeding at all? Yeah, it was bleeding. I didn't see it at this point. She saw the blood first. <laughs> did what did you have on a t-shirt? Uh, no, I had my jack, my snowboarding jacket, and it was everything. coming, and the blood was coming through the jacket all over the snow. Fuck, like, it was everywhere. No! Like I didn't even notice. She was like, I don't think you're okay. And she pointed down, and I was like, oh. I Nonsense, guess. it's just a flesh wound. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, that's how I was acting about it, you know? And then I was supposed to grab her and take her down with me, and that's how, like, the insurance works. I didn't know any better. Somebody was like, bro, get down to the bottom of the mountain. I, you know, <sighs> finished strapping back in, put some snow on it, put my glove on it, and just, you know, down the mountain to get some help, so. And then you're in for a fucking three-month recovery process with that, right? Yeah, definitely. So what happened is that you had to go and get it stitched up and all the tendons reconnected. Yep, all the tendons reconnected. Does that have any effect on the way that you clinch your fist and punch? No, not now. No, it, it did. And I, I mean, I really, uh, in PT, I really worked on it because this finger was the biggest, like these ones were the biggest ones that were the hardest to, mm. to curl. And you can still see like the uh, the flexion of it and everything. You can still see it moving and yeah. all that good stuff. But okay. uh I had to break through that had scar tissue, so it wouldn't let me bend it all the way. It pops still, but, like, I don't feel it. It's all good. What would you say is, like, you seem to do a lot of things, and as I mentioned at the top of the show, but what what would be your greatest achievement out of everything that you've done? Like, sports, family, fucking whatever. That's my greatest achievement is my kids and my family, you know, like, to be able to be a family man and be there for my children and be present and... I mean, that's that's got to be the biggest thing. For Was me. your old man present for you? No. So my pre- my dad wasn't present. And, you know, again, different lifestyles and everything. My, my dad went to jail when I was really young. Yeah. Um, and then... Like how young? Like I was like four years old when he went to jail. Do you remember him going to jail? So I do. I remember... Little bits, flashbacks? Little yeah. flashbacks of like people surrounding the house and everything like that. Oh, so he did something bad? Yeah, 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 Can yeah. Can you talk about what he did? Yeah, so my dad, he went to... I don't necessarily know the... I haven't asked him or sat down with him to ask the whole thing, you know what I'm saying? But I know that people got hurt. <laughs> right. And, uh, Was there weapons involved? Some people involved? got unalive. Oh, okay. You know? Yeah. Um, wow. That's yeah. got to be intense for you to have on your heart. Yeah. No, 100%. It definitely played a big part in like me growing up. And a lot of people told me, like, oh, you remind me of your dad. You're going to be a lot like your dad. Because I was really, like, angry and aggressive when I was younger. So, uh, it, you know, and then I didn't know him because I had only met him, like, maybe one time, twice twice throughout the whole before he actually got out of jail. Um, so I didn't quite know, but that that all played a part in my life for sure. When did he get out of jail? He got out when I was just about to turn 18, so right right before I turned 18. And you don't have a relationship with him now? So we do have a relationship now. Oh, you do? Mm-hmm. Oh, good. Mm-hmm. Is it good? Yeah, our relationship is good. You know, like uh, I'm blessed to have a father who's, who's alive and doing well and, you know, working and married and doing his thing. So uh, our relationship wasn't the greatest for a long time, but uh, – you know, I think you have to get past some of the things that we forget and, and you know, look for the blessings that we actually have. And that's what we kind of tried to focus on. And that's when, it, believe it or not, it, that's when it always feels better because if you've had a, um, you know, a difficult relationship with a parent and then you, you know, like you said, you break through that barrier, those walls and you get past it, you become extra close and it just means a lot more. I agree with you. I, I was the same with my old man. We fucking butted heads up until... I moved to America, as a matter of fact. It wasn't until I moved over here and he saw what I was doing with my life. And then then we were like that. Uh-huh. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I can get what you say. But how many kids do you have now? So I have four kids, three girls and one boy. You strapped that thing up. I already did, man. That thing is strapped to the side. You, you wear like a rubber up. band around I it do, now? Yep. Yeah. I do, I only take it out for like special occasions. You yeah, know? you just look at that fucking thing and you're eight <laughs> months pregnant. 100%, man. Damn, you know, what I is it with learn. that? You got that super, you got that, those super swimmers. Super swimmers. I don't know what it is, you know. But, uh, yeah, my wife was trying to get another one, but I was like, nah, it's you or me. And. We had to take care of that. Oh, situation. really? So you got you took care of it? Yeah, no, she decided to. Oh, she decided to. Uh, and it was because it was free for her based off our insurance, and it would have cost me like four hundred dollars. And then I was like, oh, I'll still get it done. She's like, What do you need to get it done for? You <laughs> you're know? like, You're like, Yeah, you're right. Ah! <laughs> like double trouble. Like that. Yeah. we're done. Like, oh. It's a blessing for sure. But it's like I didn't have any idea that I would actually be able to be there for my children and provide for them. And Why? Be- just because when you, I didn't have that. Just when the way you that know? you, yeah, you didn't have that instilled into yeah. you from your your yeah. growth, yeah. And even the stepfather I had, you know, even I respected what he did do. He didn't show me how to be the man that I am still. Who you know? told you, who showed you that? I, I honestly think two men in particular are like my, and I wrote a thing about them in high school too. My uncle Mike, uh, 
he was a huge, huge inspiration for me just for everything he went through. And then my grandfather, like he would sit down just the way he would try to get me to think and always tell me to be using my mind and, and let me know that I do have a brain and that I can utilize it and can be, you know, articulate in the way I speak. And I and I don't have to necessarily go down these uh, stereotypical roads, you know, Yeah. and I can still be authentic to who I am and where I'm from, you know. So uh, those are the two people in particular that really like uh, kind of gave me um some footing in life, and then throughout life, still other other people's parents and other people I've met through my coaches life, coaches and things like that. Yeah, absolutely. What's your heritage? Uh, I'm black, so you're black. Yeah, yeah so African American. We said my mom says that we're a couple different things. Like we got some French in there, we have um, some Indian in there, but for the most part, both my parents are African American. So mm. it's pretty crazy. Where'd the light eyes come from? I, so my granddad has hazel eyes on her side, had hazel eyes, and. I guess there's some similarities there, uh, but you know, I didn't really, I never really saw like crazy similarities, but there is some similarities there. Um, but has yeah. your dad got, has your dad got light eyes? No, my dad definitely does not, no. Mm. Yeah. 100%, Some, I, I, question, I questioned it, I questioned it for a long time. <laughs> it's like, mom, know? come on now. <laughs> Not even did I just question so much, because I was born like white, basically, right? So, uh, white Yeah, because you're not, you, you're not dark. Yeah. I, I always thought that when I first saw you, I thought you were maybe like Hawaiian or something like that. Yeah, yeah, that, that hundred, my, uh, Kyler's one of the, he always says I look like I'm like, you know, uh, Cuban. <laughs> Cuban <laughs> <hitters>. <laughs> something like that, so uh, definitely, definitely kind of different, different looking for sure, you know? Um, but yeah, yeah, both my parents are African American and, and I just came out looking like this. My brothers and sisters used to say it when I was growing up all the time that I was a milkman's child. I used to get way more mad when I was younger. Yeah. They used to call me white boy all the time, you really? know. Who you, your brother and sister would call you yeah, white boy? My brother but all of them, they'd just be on me, like, Are you even from our same family? Like, are wow. you sure? Yeah, you're like that you're like that tall Kardashian, you know the one you know the one that's they say is not yeah, Chloe. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Chloe for sure. I'm like Chloe. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. Oh fuck, that's funny. Uh, I mean, but brothers and sisters are allowed to do that to each other. But do you know now that you're officially theirs? Yeah, I mean, we never, we never. But yes, but like that's my bro. Like we all have so many similarities. Like even though I'm light skinned, I look like them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, do, do you have one brother and one sister? I have one sister, two brothers. Are they older? So my my brother's older than me. Then my, my brother Marvin's older than me, and then my sister's younger than me, and my my younger. Then I have a brother who's younger than me. And how old's the youngest one? Ah, I think he just turned 30. He might have just turned 30. Does he, does, does, can any of them fight? Uh, I mean, they'll say they can. You know what I'm <laughs> I give them a hard time. It's different. You know, I tell them all the time. But, I mean, they got me into tons of fights. You know what I'm saying? Because they, you could get them out of fights. Yeah, they got, oh, bro, so you, have you always been a tough cunt? I've definitely always been the guy who was like, hey, who's fighting? Yeah, me. You know? <laughs> like That was always you. Always been me. So man. you've always been able to fight. Yeah. It's something that I was like really interested in as a kid and I didn't get a chance to train like a lot. I didn't have the opportunity to really like dive into my obsession with training, but I loved martial arts as a kid. Your training was on the streets, baby. Yeah, definitely was in the streets too, but I was training at home, you know, anything I could pick up on, any style that I could pick up on, meditate, anything. Really? Like my mom would say it, my grandparents would say it, like I was training twice a day still, you know, not because someone told me, but because I was interested in how to use a six foot staff or a six foot pole and you know how to use nunchucks and how to do like I was always interested in martial arts martial arts so martial arts movies as well like Bruce Lee movies Rocky all Bruce every, Lee uh, uh uh Donnie Yen Jackie um, Chan Jackie Chan is my man um um yeah Jet Li Jet Li was like crazy you know black mask I was like so all that stuff and it took me a long time to realize like the levels to it and where things are effective and not you know like and and Mixed martial arts helped me cue a lot of that in, but I would say my first even like actual traditional martial arts that I did under a person was uh, Wing Chun, and it was under Sifu Mark Bakira, who's now in prison for a long time. But um, was it with these guys called Mark? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude, let's try not to let's try not to be on there too. Yeah, you know? yeah. No, but you don't do anything illegal anymore. Yeah, right? you no. got too much to fucking lose. Dude. Yeah, you know, honestly, I haven't done anything illegal in a long time. Honestly, I I try to be focused on. The things that are important, you know, and I don't try to put myself in places where I know that, you know, I I can. You can fuck up. A hundred percent. Because it's in you. It's still there. You just, you're just suppressing it and keeping control of that guy. A hundred percent. Which is, it takes a lot more than to do that than some guy that just fucking goes off and loses it. And, you know, to be the guy that can do it, but have to. You know, keep it at bay. Mm -hmm. That's power right there. Yeah, I. That's like the stoke. Like 
uh, like a stoic th- uh, quote. I can't think of it, but that's exactly what it is. It feels like a power of mind that I've gathered over time for sure. It's- Sobriety will give you that too, getting your mind clear of, of everything. And then also, um, I suppose having kids, I, I haven't, I wasn't blessed to have kids. I have animals, lots of them, <laughs> and they kind of substitute as my kids, but I have never been blessed to have kids, but I know how protective I feel even over my animals. Yeah. So I can, I can only assume what it's like to have four kids. Yeah. Yeah. There's not a whole lot of soft spots I have in life, but, uh, yeah, those are my, that's my life, you know? But you seem like such a, without insulting you, a soft guy, Marcus, yeah. you seem like a soft hearted soft-spoken man. I got to give that credit to my kids, you know? Like, really? Like, the, my relationship that I've built with them, not just my kids, but I have to say my wife, too, because learning how to overcome a lot of things that I was to be a good husband, not just a husband, but a present good husband to her, and then also be a present good father to my children, and trying to understand them, opposed to coming in with that that masculine energy that, like, I'm is, the dad, I'm the ruler, I lead the house. A hundred percent, you know? And the, you had to learn that? As you went on? Yeah, so it's That's definitely great. something that I've had to learn, and I have to give them all the kudos in the world because um, they're why I had to learn because I wanted to be able to – I want them to trust me. I want them to know that I have their back in good and bad, you know, um, and, and then the, I want them to be able to come to me and talk to me and conversate. And do they? Oh, yeah, 100%. How old your oldest? My oldest is 14. Boy or a girl? Girl. Oh, mm-hmm. fuck, how's that? That's – she's my best friend. You know, and I, I know it's hard for a lot of people to say that, but like she is one of like she was the beginning of it. She the love I had to give her, it, it, it blessed me in such a big way because um, it gave me the ability to have this vulnerability and be confident in that vulnerability and understand what that emotion and feeling is and still know that the other guy is there. Like he's there, too. You know what I'm saying? Mm. But who what am I going to feed? You know, what do yeah. I want to feed? I want to feed this that guy. Yeah. A hundred percent because. I, she, I could see, I could see the benefits of that guy from her, you mm, know, mm. and how I interact with her and how her emotions feel and how she goes into her life and different things like that. So is she at the boy crazy stage yet? Not boy crazy. She does like a boy, but again, it's beautiful because I gave them the, uh, I gave them the platform to be able to come to me and be like, Hey, I like this person. I'm ta- I want to talk to this person. And then for us to have a conversation, like, what does that mean? And then also talk about it biblically as well so that they can understand that side of it as well. Um, That's a must. 100%, right? So that they understand that it's not just a conversation between me that they're having, but it's a conversation between God that they're going to have as well, you know? Um, and, and so, like, adding that into the whole mix of it for them to make their own decisions because they're their own people. Like, wake up, whether or not I want to be that father who is overbearing, they are their own people. They're going to go off to be their own lives. And I'd rather them bring me into that life and me be able to help and be there and, and help them when they do fall down uh, and them be willing to do that because they don't feel like I'm about to just be gone the moment they let me know. Mm. Um, it's su- super important to me. Yeah, I'm having a little bit of a problem with the transition from my girl, Jennifer. Her sister, her little sister, who is now 12, has been in my life since she was a year old. Now she's hit 12 and it's makeup, clothes. I see a few boy things on her TikTok, and I'm having a real problem with accepting it. Yeah, but and it's hard too, right? Because like, and, and a, you don't want it for them, but you do want it for them, right? They're alive, you know, and and love and all these things that come apart, and those those feelings of those are all real feelings that they're gonna have to deal with. And the only thing we can do is help them to to make the right decisions with those feelings because they're human beings, you know, like. I knew it was going to happen though. I would say it. I would say it years ago to Jen. I'd be like, "I don't like this, man. It's he's going to be. Too, uh, I, I don't know. I, I, maybe it's because of the traumatic things that happened to me when I was a kid. I worry about them happening to her as well. I don't know what it is. Maybe something deep rooted. Who knows? But I have a problem with her transforming from that little girl that was singing Frozen and wearing a Minnie Mouse shirt to fucking putting on lip gloss and looking like a chola and yeah, yeah, I have a problem with it. It's funny you say that. That's my daughter for sure. My daughter. <laughs> yeah. uh, but she doesn't get too crazy. Like, and she has her different days and I tell her to like absorb all that, be in all that. You Does know she have saying? a phone? Uh, yeah, she has a phone too. You know what I'm and saying? And you have access to that phone? Complete access. She have social to media? Uh, just Instagram. Just yep. She just has Instagram? Yep. yep. No TikTok or anything like that? Mm, uh, I that think she you... has TikTok too yeah, that she yeah, watches. Yeah. Uh, but she doesn't do TikToks and stuff like that. Right. So, but she's not over sexual. Like I see a lot of these young, man, it, 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 it's, it's, 
it's got to stem back to fucking what happened to me when I was a kid, I reckon. But I have a problem with seeing younger people as older, like whether it's makeup, whether it's short shorts or anything like that. I have an issue. Why that, That's why I suppose a lot of this uh, hidden dark side of the elites mm -hmm. really fucking bothers me a lot. No, 100%. And again, like she, I'm blessed the fact that she doesn't even want to do that type of stuff. Like good, she has good. her own style and her style is cool because it's authentic to her, right? But yeah. I, I've always told her like, that's what you like break into whatever styles you need to do to feel good about yourself and be worth you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But at the same time, like, yeah, she's not into any of that stuff. But I think a lot of that plays, because even my youngest girls, my, my two youngest are bubbly and cutest little things ever. I worry more about them because of how cute they are, you know? And, uh, and my daughter, my oldest daughter is cute too, but she's like, you know, she's her own person. You do know? you see that in her now? Like that maturity, that, that, that kind of turning into a woman, her own person. I Absolutely. don't have to worry about her. She knows how to make her own decisions. Are you at that stage with I, her? I really feel that way about her. Oh, like, that's I'm, good, man. I'm also, we're also always working and she always has to, but I really feel that way about her. And my two youngest, they're, all my kids are phenomenal kids, honestly, but the world is a crazy place, right? And yeah, it tells man. you to be whoever you are. And just like you said, from life life things you know mm. uh trauma is going to be there yeah. so that's why i'm like okay you know what what a lot of the trauma that i end up having to go through is because i didn't have anybody who i can go to around me and be like hey like this is you know what i'm saying this is how i'm feeling this is what's going on yeah and, and think, even if you did it'd be yeah, fucking whatever yeah you're fine yeah or don't do or, or you yeah. better not yeah you better not yeah you know yeah. opposed to like hey well let's yeah. talk about yeah. it like what's going on what's going on with your mind how are you feeling what are mm. you thinking about and it doesn't have to be like uh it doesn't have to be like, oh, you, everything you talk about is going to happen just because you're still saying it. But it's like, let's work through this and see where we're at with this. You know what I'm saying? Let's yeah. really think this through. Uh, opposed to getting too emotional about it. See, this is just the prime example of like <laughs> when they say, why is there so much? Why are kids fucking up so much these days? Because they don't have a mum and a dad that are together for one and that are instilling these um, life lessons into them. When it's one parent, you got these 14, 15 year old boys that are just running around like fucking criminals and maniacs. So it comes down to having a mum and dad. Like, man, I still remember stuff from that I never thought was traumatic when I was a kid, right? Your uncle rubbing up against you with a boner, right? That, that's probably not something <laughs> yeah. that, you know. You didn't get excited about that? <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I mean? I always refer back to that because I, as a young, I didn't really know that was you know, something wrong, especially when you go to a parent and tell them and they shush it mm -hmm. or they undermine it or they push it away. So I'm glad that you had that relationship with your daughter, man. Yeah, very important. And probably because all of her friends know that if anyone fucking messes around, they're getting fucked up. I even love them more for the fact that they don't even tell their friends that I'm a fighter. You know what I'm Really? Saying? They don't even tell their friends about it. Like they're not, it's not that they're not uh, proud of me, you know, because they are proud of me, but like they just, they don't find value like in that and using that to their advantage. So have you ever had any of the friends come over and one of the little boys recognize you from the UFC? Yeah, for my son though, because my son's 13. He's about to be in high school. He has a girl that he's trying, that he likes too. But again, he's made me so proud because of how he's come at me and we've talked about it and we went through this whole conversation because it's going to happen eventually. I can just help you work in what relationships mean at your age, at your stage, where you are, how you want it to progress, what you want to do, who are you trying to be to this young girl who's going to be a woman? What You know you know what he wants to be. I know, I 100%. But honestly, talking to him more about it, like he's brought biblical stuff up to me. You nice, know? Oh, that's like, great. It's pretty cool, because I didn't think that they were really with it, with it, you know? Like I didn't think that they, because we go to church pretty frequently, and you know, I do try to talk to them about God and Jesus Christ, and. A lot of the music I listen to, listen to now is like really focused on that, and, and they come to our service as well. So it's like sometimes you can't tell whether or not things are like sinking in, or they're like really grasping this or finding their own way. And uh, I said something to him, and he was like, "Man, he's like, I'm more along the lines of biblical, anyways, Dad. I believe that you should wait until marriage." And da da da. I was like, "Whoa, where did this even come from?" Because I'm more, I'm also like, "Yes, I want that for you." But the moment that you know you're gonna do whatever you're gonna do come let me know. We need to learn what rubbers are. We need to learn how to stay protected. We need to learn, you know, like we have to talk, really have this conversation about this so that you make good and right decisions. And when you do make that decision, you know you're making the wrong decision if you decide not to. Fuck, I never had those conversations with my parents. Hey, did you, George? Yeah, yeah. I was I was a bad kid. They knew I was out. <laughs> yeah, you, like yeah, when you outside. were he when you were outside. thirteen yeah. or fourteen, were you like chasing chicks at that stage? Yeah, like I was like leaving the house at night and like going and. Were you a virgin at that age? Finding parks. Well, at a point, <laughs> yeah. Well, 
<laughs> yeah, it was finding parks or sneaking into windows. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That too, that's yeah. when they were like, my mom gave me my first box of condoms like when I was like 13. Oh, man. Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that didn't happen a, for me for sure. Yeah, we, I grew up in the 70s and 80s. We did it raw, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> sure. yeah. 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 I was told it's going to fall off if you use it. Then when it didn't fall off, I was like, <laughs> I'm doubling up. Yeah. I'm Every, doubling up. Yeah, everybody gets it. <laughs> it's still here. You get Every, some. You get, you get some. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's plenty to go around. Yeah, that's fucking awesome. See, when you're sitting here talking to these guys in these podcasts, you don't realize how much of a fucking badass he is. Georgie, can we like pull something up so people around the world can just and, and then maybe maybe Marcus can commentate through it and just let us know. Um, maybe it's the inside stuff. So we're gonna go. We're gonna talk about some of Marcus's knockouts here. Do you remember this one, Marcus? Yeah, yeah. It's a Ronnie Mandala. I literally had just lost my job right before this, and uh, and was like dialed in. I was just like, man, all right. Well, I got this fight coming up uh, against a tough guy. You know, I, he was. Yeah, I know. I saw he had been a champion in a different organization. And I was like, all right, let's go. This is my first pro fight right here. Uh, Nick Alwag. Uh, he had fought my teammate as an amateur. So when we get, took the fight, I was going to 35. I was excited to fight him because he was tough. They went three rounds. So I was pretty excited to get him out of there in the first. Wow. And what a great knockout that was too. Yeah. I feel like going Southpaw Orthodox coming up. So this is Rafael Montini. This is my third fight. And he was six and three, I think, at the time. And like one of Fight Ready's like hot guys. Uh, and I was like, and I was only two and oh. So I was like, man, this is a crazy opportunity, but let's go. I want it, you know? I don't think I've ever seen anybody do a hammer fist like that from standing up. Yeah, I, it's something that I work in there. I, yeah, I've never. I don't think I've ever seen that. Yeah, I, I, it's just like uh, softening him up. You know, it's like I call it softening him up, but standing. You yes, know? I love it. And then this is my second fight against. Uh, oh man, I can't think of his name. I know the diamond is what his nickname was though, uh, and he was super tough too. <laughs> this one ended up being a, a, supposed to be a catch weight of one forty because he came in short notice. But uh, he ended up being 142. But I was like, thank you so much for taking the fight. I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> what were you there? Uh, what In the cage? Yeah, you looked heavy. Oh, yeah. I was probably like, yeah, 50, above 55. 155, for sure. yeah, for sure. Nice head kick. Another nice head kick there. Mm -hmm. I can think you're going to come in with that right hand. Yeah. Boom. Nice. So, oh, it was the knee that dropped in. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah. So that knee, I remember being so nasty. I knew he was done after well, that. He looked like he was in pain, too. Yeah, he was out, out. He was out for a little while. Wow. And he was a tough guy, too. This one was a catch weight as well because I took it on short notice. A bunch of short notices that couldn't. I was always trying to find fights, but it was a little bit uh, a little bit hard. You know, I'm older. Uh, I train at a good gym. Yeah. Um, so. It was and like, plus you've got, I mean, you've never been put away like that. Yeah. Have no, you? No, no, never. You've never been knocked out. Never. You've never been choked out. Yeah. I, so I tap. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like yeah. In the gym, like, you know, don't get me wrong. I've, gotten, I've let myself get really close just to feel those feelings, you know. And being like pretty close, uh, but no, like I'm not trying to get choked out. I'm trying to get better. You now, know? with your one loss, what was that from? From rear naked choke. That yeah. was from the rear naked choke. Yeah. Was that a jujitsu expert that got you in that? Yeah, he was really good too. And I knew going into the fight, we knew that that was his specialty, you know, because uh, he has, I think he has six wins by rear naked choke, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so that's his thing that he goes to and he catches it really good on really high level guys. Um, so we knew that was a thing. And then uh, the mis mistakes were made, you know. Uh, and again, I just felt like my focus was on things I shouldn't have been focused on instead of just fighting, you know, and being there to fight. So you're nine and one now, right? Mm -hmm. It's, it's gotta be a, uh, you gotta feel invincible just about not fucking losing and just whether you're knocking them out or choking them out, you're just putting everybody away. I wish I could say that. I don't, you know, I don't, I, I say it all the time. Like I, anybody can get touched. Anybody can have a bad night. And I truly believe that, you know, so I try to show up every night and every every practice with intent and just be there and be thankful for the things that I can't control, which is my my output, my effort, you know, um, because, yeah, I don't know. I, I haven't caught into that invincibility thing. Uh, I know I have a long way to go. I know I have a lot more to learn. So you feel like you're just getting started then, do you? Absolutely. Absolutely. I do. I feel like I'm getting constantly getting better, stronger, you know, um, faster more intelligent and in multiple different aspects like uh and i think i kind of like that i'd rather stay on that and side go, of it. Go, go gradually get better and better and better and better yeah it's just i mean i can only imagine what it would feel like i mean as a civilian it's hard for us to comprehend what it feels like just knowing that you can just fucking put anyone away at yeah. any time 
it is it, it's it's like a it's a with great power comes great, great responsibility. responsibility you know <laughs> that, guy, yeah. that guy there's uncle said that 100 percent. and i guess it gives us that humility as well though especially training with a lot of different high level guys being put in bad positions especially if you're training with guys who care about you and who you care about you should be getting put in bad positions you should be feeling that fear yeah. regularly not necessarily fear that you're gonna get body harm but knowing what it's like to be under somebody mm -hmm. knowing what it's like to be on the outside of punches inside of punches what yeah. what those things feel like and becoming comfortable in that area you know yeah chris curtis was telling me that when he spars with sean strickland that sean's trying to put him away mm -hmm. like he's not going a hundred percent of course but he's putting him in a position that he needs to be put in yeah no and that's and that's a lot of it and again we really try to focus on not putting each other away like that's not but we're trying to land these shots at real speed real time right and if we could pull just the end of that so we're not really giving each other brain injuries and bodily damage because that's the biggest thing making it to fight healthy right yeah and there's um, a fine line too isn't there really it really is before it becomes it's going to be disadvantageous to you for your actual fight where this right guy, it's like you know you're having a spar against someone that's known for going in there and trying to hurt you and you're like oh fuck, i don't want to fight this guy because i know it does that happen a lot is there certain people that that you can't spar against because you know they're gonna go fucking a hundred percent. Not for me. Not for uh, you. Not, it's not a respect thing, gym. right? Yeah, and there yeah. is guys that I know will go like that, mm. but it's like I've had to learn how to go with those guys, right? Yeah. You know, and which which makes me be more tentative too. Like, okay, maybe I'm gonna have to work a lot more defense this round because I need to be impeccable on my defense because he's gonna be throwing hard, he's gonna be going hard, he's gonna be hitting great angles, he's gonna try to land it. Which again gives you that outlook too. Was like, okay, my defense is good enough to be able to withstand when somebody is really trying to come at me as well. But sometimes we'll get into that ego thing, right? You want to bang it out, so I want to bang it out. Now we're both just banging it out, you know? Yeah, yeah. And uh, the egos you can be your biggest enemy at, at, at most of the times. Mm -hmm. What do you tell yourself when you're when you're literally when the referee says, "Are you ready?" Is this you, is there something you're telling yourself in that moment upwards, or are you just Honestly, most of it's like, it would sound like prayer if you heard me in my head before. And not prayer of like... Uh, God, of like, please help me knock this guy out. Yeah, nothing like that, you know what I'm saying? Nothing along that way. More like just thank you so much for life. Thank you so much for all these people's lives. Thank you so much for the opportunity that you've given us all. You know, like, like thank you. Like, that's kind of where I'm... Gratitude, in, eh? A hundred percent. Like you got to have full gratitude. Yeah. And I see you getting I see you getting a little uh, emotional even when you say that. Yeah. That, that's that's good, man. It brings a good... Like, for me, it brings a real good, like, energy to me. And, like, it's freedom. You know what I'm saying? It's freedom from outcomes. Because it doesn't matter how great we are and how invincible we feel. We are only humans. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And that's the truth of it, you know? So, um for me in particular, just pulling myself out of like all the extra outcomes and all the extra emotions and feeling and just being rooted in the here and now and the, and the, and the ability to be wherever we are, whether it's pain, whether it's joy, whatever it are, be in that, you in know? In the moment? Yeah. That's what I've found with this amazing new product that I've been taking, that it's really given me the opportunity to live more so right in the moment instead of worrying about things that I've done in the past and things that haven't happened in the future I've actually been able to concentrate more of in the moment for example this conversation that we're having right now um, I'm I'm completely in, indulged in it because I'm not thinking about the 10 guys that I've got to interview at fucking five o'clock tonight or damn I should have wore the shirt that doesn't show my bitch tits um, <laughs> you know what I mean I'm engaged in the moment which is you know Great segue into, you know, this episode is sponsored by Muse, which is great psilocybin infused mushroom products. If you want to change your life and, um, you know, think a little bit more clearer, maybe have a little bit more excitement, a bit more vividness. Don't take it from me. I'm just giving you my personal experience. But if you want to try it, you know what to do. Go to Muse. They'll help you out. Yeah, man. I, I really appreciate that living in the moment. It took me a long time to work that out, eh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think it's going to be something we're continuously working out until we, we leave this earth, right? Because yeah. Because there's that, there's that, just like our heartbeat, like that rhythm up and down and how far up and how far down you go, it depends, yeah. you know, but the highest high is the lowest low. So if you get too high, you're going to hit low. If you get too low, it's like yeah. no matter what, it is what it is, you know? Do, do you think about that moment when you leave, when you leave your body and your spirit? Do you, do you ever think about that, that fucking final few seconds or what happens right do you think about that? I do. And now that you mention it, not like crazy thought about it, but it's like it's absolutely a thought that has uh, has passed through my mind multiple times. I like watching a lot of documentaries on people that have um, 
that were like dead for 30, 40 minutes and then they got revived and what happened to them when they crossed over. Mm -hmm. You interested in that kind of stuff? Does it scare you or anything? It doesn't necessarily scare me. You know, honestly, like there was a point in my life where it was something that I had, I had to overcome, you know, because there was that fear. Fear of death? Yeah, the fear of death. Uh, And it's because I always said it earlier on in life, oh, I'm going to die at 18. I'm not making it to 18. Oh, I'm going to die at 20. Oh, I'll be lucky to make 21. Oh, there's no way I'm making 24, you know? And then finally, after a while, I was like, where is my where is my mind? Like, why am I focused on this? Yes, I'm going to die. It's going to happen, regardless if I like it or not. It's going to be a part of my life. And to be so afraid of something that every single living being is going to go through, um, I was like, man, that just seems... Yeah, seems, it's a, it seems like, it seems pointless. It really is. Like again, it's, na- it's as natural as being born. It really is. And then again, none of us have any real retrospect on what is on the other side even if you've had glimpses from close to being dead you know yeah, like, i agree we won't know until we get there you and, know? I, and i reckon what's going to happen is we're going to cross over and we're going to go what <laughs> what was i worried about this is fucking awesome <laughs> i truly believe that you know you'll see your homeboy jesus coming down and then people that you you know died before you and i reckon it's going to be a, a an experience and when i look at it as something that i'm not saying that I like, I'm kind of looking forward to it. Like, yeah. I'm not really scared about it anymore. The only thing I would be scared of would be missing my girl, but I don't think that would, I don't think you have that emotion on, uh, who knows? once again, it's a speculation, but yeah, it's something that uh, I used to be scared of too, but now I'm kind of looking forward to it without bringing it on, without speaking it into yeah, existence. Yeah, but you know, again, none of us know our time. We're all online, yeah. you know, we're yeah. all online, whether we like it or not. It's it, going to suck if you get a phone call this afternoon. Hey, bro, Marcus fucking had a bad accident. Yeah, he's not yeah. going to make it. And yeah. you'll be like, well, he said he wanted to go. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah that'd be crazy. Wouldn't that'd that be, be crazy. fucking crazy? Let's yeah. touch with it. That doesn't happen. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I do got, you know, four hours of driving yeah. for this, you know. Oh, so you're going to drive, you drive back to Arizona from here? Yep, yep. So I was going to fly in, but I'm such a procrastinator. My wife hates it sometimes, and I didn't get the tickets early enough for it not to make sense i was like yep i'm driving so when did you get here literally uh what 15 minutes before i came in so you drove today uh-huh. did this and you're driving back yeah george how fucking great is that <laughs> it's insane dude <laughs> we yeah. appreciate it man absolutely why I do i feel okay explain this i should be i should feel and i do feel very honored but i also feel fucking bad yeah no not at all no but, but i do uh, I absolutely wanted this. One day we'll get a private jet, like like (laughs) limousine service. It'll just be super easy and cheap, like, you know? Yeah, and then you won't have to worry about it ever. Cheap? (laughs) What are we doing with the sheep? No, I said cheap. Oh, cheap. Oh, yeah. I thought, I thought <laughs> fuck it out. I ain't doing it. Had... <laughs> Ride a sheep from Arizona to here. Jeez. That, then you should feel bad. So how long did it take you to get here? Uh, I thought it was four hours. But then when I, so I woke up a little later because I was like, oh, I got four hours. It ended up being like, Five, like just about under five hours, like four hours and forty-seven minutes. Can I at least help you with some gas? Oh no, you're 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 perfect. I promise you. Yeah, no, honestly, gas wasn't that bad either. So I was like, dude, that's way. You gotta let me sell you something. Yeah, for gas. Oh, man, I I appreciate you, but I really wanted to come out and do this with you. I know we had talked about it so long ago. Yeah, and I'm putting it off, and I know I'm I'm looking for a fight right now too. So mm. I don't want to be trying to travel later on. I was like, yeah. I can't put this off with Marcus anymore. I need to get there. So I was like, this is happening. What's your um, timeline for your next fight? Yeah. Are you ready? To, you ready to go now? Are you ready to? You're always in shape, though, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So it's just it's just weight cuts at this point, right? Because I'm pretty active. Like even when I'm outside of camp, I'm trying to train four, two times a day, at least five days a week. You How know? many days a week do you spar? Only two days a week, but I'm sparring two days a week too. You know, uh, and um, you know, I'm I'm really trying to be be there and be present during those times too. So as far as Everything else goes, it's really just like eating management, right? What do we decide to eat? Are we done eating bread? Are we done eating these things that can keep us a little heavier, but aren't necessarily bad for us outside of camp, right? Mm-hmm. Because it gives me more energy to be focused on the things I'm trying to do. I'm trying to do two practices and hang out with my kids and go skateboard. So you got to have, some, you gotta have some rice and bread in there. <laughs> yeah. 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 So it's a... Uh, it definitely uh that's it for me. So I'm, look, I'm looking forward to whatever matchup I do get. So I'm looking forward to a call. Uh, I've just been... Me and my manager have been talking, so I... I know something's going to be coming up here soon. Who 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 kind of interests you? Because your division is pretty 
stacked now, right? 100%. Like, where the fuck does the Bantamweight division become a main event for one? I love, I just love how it's gone from the 55 was the fucking big stack, and now it's the Bantams. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy to be in there and be a part of it. There's so many crazy fights, so it's hard for me to get it, and I think that so many of them are exciting, you know, and for so many different reasons, right? So it's like, it's going to be exciting just seeing what is up next and how that plays out, and then just kind of, you know, working up the, up the ladder, so... Do you look at these people that are higher ranked than you and maybe even the champ and look at them and go, come on, <laughs> are, are you that confident in yourself where you can go, come on, like, this is, this is fucking easy work. Man, no, that's not me at all. That's I'm, not you. I'm more like Justin Gaethje. I'm going there like this guy's better than me, <laughs> you know, yeah. but that's right. Cause tonight I'm showing up, you know, yeah. he's getting the best form of me tonight every time, you know, cause uh, no, you know, I just. I find, um, I think it has to do with my upbringing and the people around and different things that I didn't like, did like, or all that extra stuff that kind of instilled in me uh, not to really be focused on that type of energy. You know, mm. it just doesn't give me, it gives me the opposite of power. You know, when I start focusing on like, oh, I'm better, or I'm bigger, or I'm stronger, or I'm faster, or, or any of those things that, you know, that might be true. You know, there might, those are aspects, and I do look at match. Uh, matches make or uh, styles make fights you know and all that stuff like too but there's a certain part that's not on paper that you know that is just un unseen you yeah, know and you have that a hundred percent yeah i do feel like i have that as no well. you do you absolutely you do 100 percent. that's why i love watching you fight and i hate it when i love my fighters and then i watch them fight and this i get this anxiety and nerves come over me i've never had it in any kind of watching any kind of sports before or anything like that but you know when you like listen to a song and you get those goosebumps or you get that feeling or it's the same with when I'm watching my favorite fighters step into that octagon. You, you, whereas you're not nervous, you understand that all of us are, right? Yeah, absolutely. As, as fans, as your family members. Now, that's another question. Does your family come and watch? The two kids are old enough to come and sit ringside now, right? Yeah, so they haven't come to the UFC fight yet. And honestly, it's partly my fault, but partly uh, just I don't, not having tickets available. But um my wife's the only one that's been up there for the fights, but my kids did come to a couple of my uh, regional fights in, in town because uh, they didn't really come at first, and then once they all were old enough, we were like, all right, I think it was like my my fourth pro fight. Uh, we were like, I asked them, like, hey, do you guys want to come? Do you understand? Like, I'm like, I know you guys think dad can't be touched, but, like, I plan to bleed, you know? I say it just like that to them. You know, whether or not it happens or not, you know? Yeah, you got to prepare them just in case. A hundred percent, like, you know? Uh, so just having those conversations with them and letting them know. So they, they haven't said they really wanted to come to the UFC fight yet. Yeah. They watch uh, it on TV though, right? Yeah. They, they watch, they've watched all the fights. Yeah. So your son would get around with his buddies and watch it when dad's fighting. Fuck. Imagine having your dad as a UFC fighter. Jesus. How good would that have been growing up? Yeah. It would have been nice. Do they always like, do they have kids that like say, Oh, I looked your dad up on YouTube. Yeah. He's crazy. Yeah. So that's yeah. A hundred percent. And so, then the teachers are like, they watch out for that kid even more because they're like, oh, this kid can knock kids out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've been telling them that. And my kids, they train a little bit, but I always be telling them, like, hey, don't think that you guys can fight because I can fight. You know? yeah. <laughs> like, oh, no, I'd be I'd be picking everyone. Hey, my dad's in the UFC. <laughs> I'd be one of those real dickhead kids, eh? Yeah. yeah. Nah. So you have a good relationship with your fans? Uh, yeah, I would I would say so. I, I get a lot of love, a lot of support. I try to be authentic with all the things I'm doing. And, and honestly, while still focusing on the things that are core, because I try not to lose myself in all the extra, which is great. I, I would love to achieve and have, you know... Uh, Shit uh, loads of money. Yeah, 100%. So that I could do incredible McGregor things that I money, do. McGregor money. 100%. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, to do the things that he doesn't talk about as much, that he, that he is doing, the foundations that he's doing, that he's building, the charities that he's... Like, you know, he's, even though like everyone only sees up, what's up front, there's so many things that are positive that are happening behind the scenes that I want to tap into, you yeah, know, yeah. Um, whilst, so, so I'm still trying to figure the whole thing out, but I do feel like I have a good uh, uh, relationship with my fan base. And you've got a good platform. You're fucking, you can fight. You're likable. People like you. But the main thing is, is that you, you, you deliver <laughs> and people can relate to you, I think, because you're a dad and plus you, you know, you have all your other parts of, of Marcus McGee. It's not just the UFC. <laughs> And as fans, we love that. Actually, George, can you grab Shane? I think you wanted to ask Marcus a couple of questions. I got you. Would you be able to grab him? He's a he's a guy from Ireland. 
and he's come over here for UFC 300. And when I told him that you were going to be on the podcast, he said, "Oh, can I come on and say hi?" So he's gonna, he's gonna, he's, hello, mate, <laughs> hello, mate. Can you have you been watching out there? Yeah, we're no, we're keeping an eye. Yeah, we are indeed. Thanks a million for the opportunity, Marcus, to come on here and ask a question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, yeah. So we'll just go right into the mic here. Yeah. So tell every tell everyone your name and where you're from, my friend. Okay, I will indeed. Uh, my name is Shane uh, McDonald. I'm from the west of Ireland, Galway. And you know we're just over for the week myself and my wife Dee, um, to watch the fights this weekend. Heck yeah! And uh, of course to meet yourselves as well. So thanks a million for that. Yeah, 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 yeah. No worries. Questions. Got a couple of questions yeah, for Marcus. A couple of questions, Marcus. Um, congrats so far in your career in, in the UFC and three and zero, and you've some unbelievable knockouts so far. Um, just a uh, first question really is uh, what's the best advice you got as a young fighter starting off in your career? And what advice would you give to a young fighter starting off in his or her career? Uh, one of the, not to rush so fast to get into fighting, to put pennies in the bank, you know? Uh, it's not necessarily about getting there and fighting, it's about developing a skill set that you can translate into fighting. And a lot of us focus on the flashy, all the flashy stuff. Uh, and that's what attracts us and, and it's all good and dandy, but that comes along with the years and years and years of putting in a penny every day on the good days, bad days, still a penny. A dirty penny is still a penny, you know? Uh, so that's why I would tell kids, just put a penny in the bank, focus on that, and everything will translate. Okay. Um, just another one, I suppose you kind of talked about it there. Um, are you scheduled for a fight or have you anyone in mind coming up or, you know, are you, are you just going to, you know, I suppose go with flow or are you, have you anyone in mind basically to fight next? Oh, man, a lot of guys in mind. And honestly, I, even, I, I, I'm not a calling out guy. Why, <laughs> Marcus? <laughs> you know, but uh, there's a lot of great fights out there for it, especially in the position that I'm in right now. You know, like, I would like to move up the rankings, you know, so uh, I'd like to fight somebody up above me for sure. That'd be yeah. the play. But again, you know, uh, I, I do trust the, my matchmaker, Sean Shelby, and what he's doing. And I think that they, they, they make great matchups. So yeah. um, I'll just look forward to whoever they, whoever they give. And hopefully I get a call soon. I wouldn't mind yeah, so being one of those June, those June fights, June, the, uh, June 22nd, fight June 20th, yeah, International Fight Week. Yeah. Okay. Something like that would be awesome. So Yeah, I suppose if I had to be Sean Shelby now, I'd probably, uh, there's a guy that's, you're 9-1, and he's 9-1, and one, and, and I have to say, Caelan Nakaran, he's Irish. Oh, so, yeah, 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 I did so see he's, that. He's won his last fight there last month. Yeah. He's one and one. Obviously, you're three and zero. Oh, I think that would be a good match if I, if I was to make a fight. That's the fight I'd make. Yeah, and uh, don't get me wrong. Like, there's a lot of those too, you know. And he's great too. I, you know, I'm definitely looking out for him too. He looked great, uh, and he's tough and he's big and he's strong. There's a lot of good good attributes about him. Um, so we'll see. But again, like for me, it's like I'd rather move. You I know, you. the an opposite way. You know, yes. like we're gonna meet. I know and that's one of the things that I, well, I don't call it anyways. I think more so is because we're gonna meet. You know, if all of us okay. keep on doing what we're here to do getting better, performing, we'll meet when the time is right, you know? Okay. So I'm pretty okay with the, with the object. I'm probably going to meet a lot of these guys. Yeah, yeah. Um, I suppose, uh, is there any, like obviously, all your fights in the States so far, haven't they been? Yeah. Is there any country finished. that you'd love to fight in? I'd love to fight in in Japan or some, somewhere like that. That'd be awesome. You know, I just love that culture, and I've never been able to be over there. So that'd be sweet to fight out over there. Uh, Ireland, too. Ireland would be awesome. I, yeah. My last name is McGee, so I know there's Irish, yes, some type of the, Irish traits there Irish. somewhere. I don't know if it's Irish or what's what's the... Uh, no, that's Irish. Yeah, that's so... Scottish, Irish. Scottish, no, it's Scottish. Yeah, Scottish is yeah. the other one I All right, take the gaze, Irish. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'd love to fight anywhere like that. Oh, brilliant, brilliant, very good. Uh, just, uh, I suppose, what got you? What got you into it? How did you get into MMA? Or how did you start? Because uh, I was already into comp or to like I was always I've always liked fighting and I've always liked martial arts. But what actually got me into to step into the gym for the first time was just being lost in life. Like I had my wife now was pregnant with our second child. Uh, uh, I was working at Circle K, making no money, trying to go to school, trying to get in the military doing things that were trying to get me away from doing all the other crazy stuff I'm doing, doing drugs with my friends, being out partying, you know, uh, doing all that type of stuff. So I was like, man, finally, a gym opened up across the street. It was LA Boxing. I was right across the street from my job. Uh, so I just decided to go in there and, and just start trying to better myself in general and put myself in that atmosphere. And um, it was a slow process, but it, it, it evolved into what it is now, essentially. Okay, that's brilliant. That's unbelievable. Um, I suppose... Obviously, I'm over for UFC 300. Is there any fight you're looking forward to this weekend? Or 
that that you're kind of right. That's the fight of the night, the people's main event. Or there's so many bangers, but the people's main event has to be Justin Gaethje. Yeah, versus Max Holloway, right? Like, yeah, yeah. I cannot wait for that one. That's just one of the ones where it's just like matchmaking. What is what does Max walk around at though? Because he's primarily a 145er. Yeah, I'm sure he walks around probably like 170 regularly. Yeah. I'm yeah. sure like in a healthy the head, healthiest state, he's probably like around around seven. 170 but that's him probably trying to like minimize things you know yeah. i can imagine him him walking around 180 185 mm. you know i can imagine him being able to do that yeah know? yeah yeah and in his position i think 178 180 would probably be prime muscle everything toned up and then make the weight cut easy too so i think he's not going to be undersized like i don't think mm. that's going to play as big a part i've heard that around the traps but i don't know if that will be either yeah i don't know <laughs> Yeah. He more, he's more time really to kind of get up to 150. The last time he fought Dustin Poirier, I don't think, as in like, he, did he put on that way? Had he that size? Mm -hmm. Right, had he, had he been had carrying around time? that size? Yeah, yeah. yeah. definitely. Um, I'm looking forward to the Cody Garbrandt fight too, actually. I'm absolutely, that's the, so that's another one, that Cody Garbrandt versus Figueroa. That's, Man, that's interesting, isn't it? 100%. And I've been a fan of Cody Garbrandt for a long time, yeah. you know. And uh, he's had his ups and downs too. I'm glad to see he's making a bit of a comeback. 100%. Yeah, it's good for him. And uh, yeah, tough matchup, man. Tough matchup, dude. That's a that's a banger, though. Yeah, you know? man. And that's the it, first fight of the night. That opens the card. Who like how like how how is that three hundred right? Three hundred. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can't yeah. say it's not the best card. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Like, yeah. I actually I, I agree with you there. It's the two of the same fights. That's the first fight. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. But there is one thing. Like obviously, I'm from Ireland. Uh, you, you mentioned Garden in there. Like I actually love. Like I. I love gardening. I love cutting lawns. I love doing the hedges. I just, it's kind of my therapy as well. You finish work and you just go home and you get out for like two hours and I just get the fresh air. And yeah, I just, I, I was like, that's I'm definitely going to mention that when I go in because it's just like, yeah. Like, so yeah. I, nice. That's exactly what I do. I go out there, water in between practices, you know, as I'm got to feed my dogs, do whatever. Go out there, water my plants, you know, maybe de leaf if I need to, trim anything up I need to, get my feet grounded for a little bit. Go, you know, go rest and then go right back. Yeah, yeah, of course. For <laughs> yeah, I'd be out. I don't want to bore, bore you too much, but yeah, you'd be out. You cutting the lawn again? Of course I am. Like it's, it needs to be done. Like I can't decide not to cut the grass. I like to see it like, like a tennis court. Like yeah. the lines down the. You know what I mean? Looking. I, I like. I take a lot of pride in my house. I, I like to see everything like you know looking good. But, looking yeah. up to shape. I so that's one of the things I go into these uh, fights too, thinking all the time. Like I always start my week off like when I before I leave, I'm like, yep, I'm gonna have to come home and pull these weeds, no matter what happens on Saturday. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yep, yeah. I gotta come True. wash all these clothes, no yeah. matter what happens yeah. on Saturday. Like you know, I gotta come trim all these bushes. Like it's like it has to be done, and yeah. I'm the one that does it. So you that's know, a hundred percent keeps you grounded. Well, Shane, yeah, th thanks for uh, thanks for coming in. Hang around because we'll we'll take a few photos oh, after that, the I show. Will do, but yeah. um, enjoy yeah. your Vegas experience, my guy. Enjoy yeah. three hundred. Enjoy the PFL, and just fucking have a great time here. I, I've seen you and I've known you for a while on social yes. media, so it's good to finally meet you in person. One hundred percent, and thanks very much. Like I love coming to, especially a UFC fight week. You can't beat it. Yeah, best promotion. Just yep. meeting yourself as well, Marcus. You know, meeting. You know, just. Being at the press conferences, being at the weigh-ins, I love the whole week. I just think, and and as well, I'm lucky. My wife loves it too, and she comes along. Bonus, <laughs> bonus. Yeah, so yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, Cheers, thank you so much. Cheers, bud. Thanks a lot. Cheers, bud. I love that. I love that. You know, I love the fans that are so passionate about the sport. So fuck, man, I could have gone on for two hours with you, Marcus. I knew you were going to be a great guy. What? How I normally like to close things out because I know you got a big ass drive. Um, I always ask my guests this. Sometimes they can answer it. Sometimes they can't. Marcus McGee, what is your message? What is my message? Uh, my message is be your own hero. You know, all the things that you want to see change in, all the things that you want to achieve, that you want to see happening around you, be the change that you want to see. My man. Thanks, Marcus. I really appreciate you driving fucking 10 hours to come and do the show. <laughs> oh, only four and a half. Only five, no, Definitely. but four and a half. I'm going to take a stop by the PI too oh, real you're gonna quick. You're going to stop in the PI? Yes. Okay, cool. Well, I appreciate you coming on, bro. Absolutely. Thank we'll do you. it again one day. Sounds good. Yeah. Sooner than later. Now, you still, look at this. I got your little, I put your little wrist farmer thing behind oh, you there too. Oh, heck yeah. yeah That's yeah, what's yeah. up. Honestly, I was looking for my wrist shirt yeah, this yeah, morning yeah, too. Yeah. I was yeah. like, no. I, I could have brought you one. <laughs> I should have. I was like, John's man. a great guy. John's a great guy. Man, so phenomenal. And Riz has done so much for me in particular. Yeah. Built better out there in Arizona. Like, Honestly, like we've been doing so much work, met them in August and we've just been grinding ever since. So it's been yeah. a beautiful thing. That's great. And uh, always good to do stuff for the community as well. So yeah. yeah.
Let's hear it for Riz Farmer. Guys, I appreciate you coming back to the channel. It was another awesome episode. Um, make sure you share, like, subscribe. If you do a little comment or just click the subscribe button, it takes two seconds. I'm doing all this beautiful content. I don't want money. I don't want nothing from you. Just your support and your love. All right? Stop calling me Conor McGregor from Wish. <laughs> <laughs> Love. This is Marcus Deegan for the Marcus Deegan Show podcast here at Sticky Paws. We're out.